Welcome back to Rocket Talk. This is now episode 16. I am joined again by Johnny and Court. You know, last week we decided to kick Johnny away. I guess this week, you know, Connor wants to you know get kicked off the show as well. So Court is going to join us again. So welcome back, Court. Uh, you know, our our super fan is you know basically a, a fourth host <laughs> there we now. Go. So, <laughs> creeping in there, creeping exactly. in there. Exactly. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me. So Johnny was gone last week, if you, if you were one of the uh, other two listeners who listened to <laughs> episode 15. But, uh, you know, while Johnny was gone, we did talk about some, some things I think he would have liked, especially Paper Mario. So, Johnny, do you want to quickly give some of your thoughts on some of our topics last week then as well before we get into this week's topics? Yeah, um, I'm. I'm just. I'm really looking forward to it. This is not only is it a, a, an amazing thing to have a release for or announcement for right now, just because there's so little that Nintendo's giving us right now, but uh, the fact that it's a Paper Mario game um, that seems to uh, at least sort of go back to a return to form is something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, I uh, I listened to the um, podcast from last week and um, and you guys were talking about how you know it, it looks like it looks just like that and and. From what everyone's kind of done, like analysis analyses on on the reveal trailer, um, they seem it, it seems to show that there's somewhere in between like new material and what um, what how things uh, were beloved. So um, I'm I'm really hoping that you know I, I I love Thousand Year Door and I think it was great, but I don't want it to be uh, like replicated. Um, I want something new, and I think that this is everything that um or i'm hoping that it's everything that we we want it to be while still being a breath of fresh air so you know it it's got a lot of great um uh you know colorful characters it's got like a little bit of horror elements to it with princess peach and the and the uh, origami king um so i'm i'm excited you know there's so many things that i don't know and for a mario game to like for really for any game to give me that feeling right now when I have like very little new the very few new games to play I'm just I'm just really excited and it's less than two months away um, at the time of recording this so yeah it was only two I'm months pumped. when they announced it so that's awesome yeah those yeah. Uh, Nintendo stealth drops I guess is what we're is the new wave now that we're not getting drinks we're just gonna get stealth I yeah. mean not really stealth drops but like but I mean it was like out of the blue just, no one knew it was coming yeah, yeah just like yeah. the Animal Crossing update announcement and the Mario Maker update announcement a few weeks ago as well. Uh, we didn't talk about it last week, but uh, quickly I wanted to get both of your guys' opinions on it too. Do you think the Metroid teaser at the end is hinting at something, or is it just Nintendo just like, hey look, we know Metroid I, exists? I, I, don't, I didn't take it as a hint towards anything. Um, I know that like they said that they're revamping Metroid Prime 4 from the ground up, like starting completely over from scratch, um, but I personally, I didn't take this to mean like, oh it's coming soon, or any hints like that. I just thought it was a cool nod. It, it may get the the geek salivating out the map, yeah. you know. Um, so that's a good way of just starting and specul. And when Nintendo is all about speculation, for sure. I mean, we're doing yeah. that right now. But there also was the Donkey Kong uh, head. I think yep. it's this cute little things that they want to have, like uh, cosmetic things. But it sure gets uh, it sure gets people to talking. And that's yeah, it's what like out of, out of all out of all the ones they could do outside of him wearing a, a Captain Falcon mask. There's not really, like, he could have had, yeah, a, some sort of Donkey Kong mask or, like, Tom Nook mask. I was like, oh, ha, ha, look at that. But since it was Metroid and, like, we've known little about Metroid Prime 4 since they announced it and then announced it's restarting, you know, that's been a franchise that hasn't been acknowledged much the last couple of years. But yeah, moving on to our Nerd News Now topics, we have five this week. The first one would be uh, we did recently get the Tenet trailer uh, released, a second trailer. It was released via Fortnite. So... Uh, wow, players that's the thing now. <laughs> yeah, uh, the same thing happened with Star Wars when they revealed it was a clip. It was the clip when uh, Finn Poe and the alien guys that are in the movie only for that one scene learn about the uh, like learn from like the the spy, uh, and so that clip briefly played before they do the light speed skipping on Fortnite back a couple weeks before the movie came out, and that actually was the uh, the way that people heard the broadcast that Palpatine made that's talked about in the teaser that broadcast was in fortnite so only people who played fortnite heard palpatine's broadcast that the opening crawl talked about so hmm. but uh yeah so it, it was on fortnite anyone who was playing and then at the top of every hour for uh i don't know how much longer it went but they were able to re-watch it 
at like the movie theater in Fortnite. So, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the trailer? Besides the fact that it's just a lot of what in the world is this movie, and it'll be good. Yeah, uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, you know, when I saw the trailer the first time, I think it was in the theater for Birds of Prey, if I remember correctly. But, um, but yeah, when I saw it the first time, I, I wasn't really invested, and and now I'm invested but confused. And um, I know a lot of people. I guess it, I guess it's the hype that more has me invested than anything, because I don't think I would have thought twice about it. I probably would have gone to see it, maybe. But um, but the fact that everybody is talking about it, everybody's making such a big deal out of it, it's kind of getting me a little more curious. Like, am I missing something? Or it's a Christopher ever- Nolan movie, so it'll be good. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, everybody, uh, like, I think, uh, from what I've gathered, everybody seems to be confused, but intrigued. And that's kind of where I'm at, so. What about you, Court? Uh, no one's track record kind of speaks for itself at this point, so you don't, uh, I didn't know what I was getting into when I saw, uh, when I saw Inception, and this has given me very, I don't want to compare, because they're different, uh, projects, but I, it's, it's given me major Inception vibes. I'm, a, I'm cool with, um. Uh, no one can whip together a trailer without revealing anything, and that's an art nowadays. When yeah. trailers reveal absolutely everything, yeah, um, Terminator. Yeah, Terminator. Uh, you have you have the airport plane scene, or whatever that is, or warehouse plane scene that looks reminiscent of uh, kind of '90s films. Michael Bay's good stuff. It kind of looks like it's over the top right there, and then the cast is outstanding. I'm assuming that's uh, Denzel's son. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um, I don't know if that's... <laughs> maybe I could be wrong about that. Uh, but it just... It looks amazing to me. I, I'm interested. Uh, Michael Caine's back. Unfortunately, we don't have Hans Zimmer that usually works with uh, Nolan, but it's still going to be solid in the score department. Yo, so, yeah, true. Um, and that is... Yeah, John David Washington is um, you know, is the son of Denzel and Paulito Washington. Oh, oh yeah, he money. Is. So he's in it. Robert Pattinson is in it Aaron Taylor Johnson is in it as well Love him. yeah what, I was hoping I wasn't wrong on that <laughs> yeah I was like but what's funny is we know like so we know about 15 of the actors and actresses that are in it but we only know like what like three of them are really we only like we only know that Washington is the protagonist and then we know that one guy is a Russian who uh who communes with the future and then that one guy's an arms dealer and is the husband of a different character. So it's just like we know nothing about this movie besides it's an agent trying to prevent World War Three. And That's, did it did it give a release date? I don't remember. So it, it on the trailer it says see it in theaters or something like that. Like like so they're they're saying it's it, it's going to be in theaters. It's still as of right now as of May twenty fourth. It's coming out July seventeenth, which has been the the planned release date for quite some time. Okay. But with that trailer, they purposely left out the uh, the release date, so in case they do delay it, they don't have to go and re-edit the trailer at the end. So mm. I, I know like that's always been uh, one of the bigger plans to be a movie that'll be a, like th- this could be like the the grand return to theaters opening up if they are able to open because this will be a big movie. You know, everyone's gonna want to go to a movie anyways, and then you have you know the guy who has made. You know, some of my favorite movies of all time, some of the some of the best movies of the last decade with the the Dark Knight trilogy and Inception, Interstellar, Dunkirk, The Prestige. So it's and it's one of those that there's some movies that like you have to see on the big screen. I think first uh, he shot a good chunk of the movie on the 70 millimeter and IMAX cameras. I don't know how much he is. Each movie he does more and more and more. <laughs> like almost all of Dunkirk, besides a couple of the. Uh, interior shots and a couple other ones were shot with the IMAX camera so it's just a lot higher quality picture bigger picture and so I am so excited for this yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go and rewatch all of the Nolan movies you know all the way through over the next you know couple months in, in hoping that it does get released you're a big don't hate- Nolan fan aren't you yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't hate me I haven't seen Dunkirk I want to Dunkirk is really good seven. too yeah it's uh it's probably so I haven't seen his first uh, I haven't seen his first three, fo- the following, oh, Memento, and okay. Insomnia, but I've seen Batman Begins, The Prestige, The Dark Knight, Inception, Dark Knight Rises, Interstellar, and Dunkirk. Dunkirk might be my, is probably my least favorite 
or but it's like it it's still really good. I still really like it. It's just that it's hard to compete with the Prestige and Inception and Interstellar. So, but I'm very excited about it. Yeah, he's like he's definitely my favorite director. So I am anxiously waiting for July 17th to come and hopefully it's in theaters which you know that's also the same day Paper Mario's out yeah yeah it's yeah. so yeah, you can bring just... you can bring the Origami <laughs> King on your Switch yeah. to the theater and you can play it while watching uh, Tenet and then go home and play Ghost of Tsushima it's yeah, such exactly. a packed <laughs> it's a packed day uh, <laughs> the thing that you touched on Luke is that it was loud and proud and bold that coming to theaters. Yeah, they Noel, like made sure you knew about that. No one. Get... It's it's one of those that unless he has to, I don't think Nolan. He's not going to be like Scoob where they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I'll just throw it on video on demand. No, it's one that it, if he has to delay the film, he's going to delay the film because it's one of those that. Well, I mean, it's also was a very expensive film for him to make. The movie will have to make, uh, I want to say two hundred. Yeah, so the per, the production budget was two hundred five million, and so. Uh, the Observer estimated the film will need to make 450 to 500 million dollars to break even. Wow. Let's just hope people are just really stoked to get into the theaters. I am yeah. going to be really stoked in the <laughs> yeah. theaters. I'll, I'll go watch give, that. I'll watch that movie with the mask the money on. That they spent. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So, yeah, that, that that is definitely one that I'm very excited for. Uh, moving on to the second topic, I guess Nolan, this, this sort of has Nolan references because it is going into uh, DC stuff. Ruby Rose is leaving as Batwoman on the Arrowverse uh, CW show. So, uh, what are you guys? What are you guys' thoughts on this? You know, I, I know it was a lot of my, just with the the hours was a, was a big one that came up with this. What are you guys' thoughts then on the main character leaving a show after her, the first season? The, uh, it's you know whenever they um, whenever a show loses its main character and they go away but the show tries to continue on without the character, it rarely works out. But in in from what I've seen in shows when they recast the main character, it usually doesn't have too much of an effect. Um, and so I'm really hoping that this is the case now because um, even though Ruby Rose, in my opinion, did a great job as Batwoman, um, I, I kind of feel like it's not something that she is going to be known for for the rest of her life. You know, it's it's going to be, you know, yeah, it was a big role for her, probably one of her biggest roles. But um, I, I think that it, the show itself was not like was not hinging on whether she was going to be portraying um, Batwoman or not. Um, but that's not to say that it's not a big deal because the main character is being recasted. Um, so I, I, am I'm, I'm kind of excited to see who, who, um, who takes over. Um, but yeah, uh, before court gives his opinion too, is, is who would you want to see replace her? One of the big ones I've seen a lot online is Stephanie Beatrice, who is Rosa from Brooklyn nine, nine. Uh, is there anyone in particular that you can really see that you'd really want to replace her or are you just going to kind of well, wait and see? Is, is, is Brooklyn nine, nine over? No, it's still on. So that, that oh. would be one where that, that then. If it's she did decide to do it, yeah, then sure. she would probably leave as Rose on Brooklyn Nine Nine, which would be a big hit for the show. Yeah. But um, well, yeah, I mean, I've I've never I've never watched too much of um, Brooklyn Nine Nine, but I do know a lot about her character and that she's like one of the one of the fa fan favorites. Um, you should watch the show, by the way. It's fantastic. I, I, I plan to. I plan to. Um, but I don't I don't have anybody in mind necessarily that I that I would. Um, that I would think would be a good fit to replace. I do know, though, that they are strictly going to um, cast uh, somebody that's LGBT, um, which, I mean, I think is great. They should do that because the character, uh, they want to be true to the character. And yeah, that's and, and, and Stephanie is bisexual, so that would work oh. if they wanted to go that route. But yeah, what about you, Court? What's your thoughts on this? Uh, I just think there's like a, a lot of factors. Butting heads, she maybe had some... Um, differences with the production crew she got hurt at one point doing stunt work um i think she's homesick for her country of australia um and she wants to go back maybe do some uh they have a bunch of soaps that are out there i don't know if that's what she would return to but maybe she wants to go into something a little bit low maintenance drama free or just be back at home and so this is absolutely i think this can work this this is kind of unprecedented in a way but uh i think yeah, I think I would throw in my, I've heard a, p a couple people and I'm really not familiar with them, but there's Wallace Day from Krypton that got canceled. Uh, and then there's Jade Taylor from uh, The Musicians. Mm -hmm. 
which I know Johnny watches. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the character very well. I don't remember who Jade Taylor was, though. Yeah. I, who she played. I don't, I don't quite know. I should have, like, <laughs> had that, but I just had the names. Uh, oh, oh there, yeah. She was Katie, yeah. Okay. And then there was also <laughs> one. Uh, she was in the Arrowverse just shortly. Her name's Bex something Taylor or something. Oh, Bex Taylor Krause. She, oh, my gosh. Right, she's amazing. But she's sort of on the small side as yeah, far as height. definitely. But she's yeah. also in the community that they kind of want to pull from, which is the LBGQ. Um, so I'd throw her in there. Stephanie I like, but I like Stephanie more for uh, She-Hulk. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good want, one, yeah. Another I one I sure. saw, too, that uh, that was on an article you shared court from Radio Times was the actress who was Poussey in Orange is the New Black, which okay. which that – I think I think that, yeah. that she would be good, too, because I mean, she showed – like, I, I, I didn't watch – Orange is the New Black, Abby did, and so it'd be on in the background a lot of times, and I'd be playing Switch or something. And, you know, like, Puse was one of the more, like, beloved characters on that show, yeah. and she also was in Handmaid's Tale, so, okay. you know... Really? Like, physicality. Yeah, so... You're, you already pulled an actress from that show, first of all. Yeah, so... Yeah, that, Ruby that, Rose is from... Yeah. So yeah, might yeah. as well... So that, that could work, and so it, it would be... People would freak out probably because of... We, we Like, the main character would also, on top of changing actresses, would also then change... Ethnicities, ethnicity. but you know yeah. that's that's what you might run into with the Stephanie uh, Beatrice or however mm -hmm. you pronounce it, with her being Latino, and then she has to have she has a paternal uh, a twin or whatever. And now I know that they're just paternal; they're not identical. But maybe you want to cast something closer to the yeah. realm. So it'll be definitely interesting to see what they do uh, with well, it with with them leaving. Um, Court, you mentioned something about how there might have been um, some like issues on set, and mm -hmm. um, and and I'm, I'm sure that's all speculation. Um, I always assumed that it was um, less that and more um, uh, wanting to step away from some of the backlash that she might have received from taking on the role. Because um, I, I know that when she was first cast, people were uh, there was a louder, um, a, a probably smaller but louder. Um, uh, group of people that were very against her being on the show. I don't know why. Um, I can't really speak as to why. I think that she did great. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say. Um, it's not I like a better in person, a, so I can't. Say I always that heard not. that there was like a heavy feminist agenda to the show, but I. I, I, don't, I don't think. Know. I think Supergirl has a stronger. Okay. Um, a, yeah, a stronger. I think uh, people just say that whenever they see anything about strong woman. female character and then right. or, or strong lgbt character it's uh it's the feminist agenda it's the gay agenda because we saw the same thing with captain marvel you're like oh yeah. this is just feminist propaganda mm -hmm. it's just like <laughs> or it's just a run-of-the-mill marvel story like a origin story and brie larson just doesn't care about all the bs that goes through with hollywood directors for its female actors no, I, yeah, I've watched everything so far, um, except I think I don't think I've seen the season finale yet of Batwoman, but I've seen every other episode, and it's um, it doesn't push anything um, uh, like at all. Like it's 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 all about her. I mean, she is a tough character, so it's it's kind of, she doesn't like have to prove it in any way. Um, I do think that um, Supergirl does a little bit more in that in that area, but it's it, I don't think it's like preachy or anything i don't think it's annoying um but i think that batwoman if, if people were wanting to target batwoman for being too like pushing an agenda it's definitely not the one that's doing it the most so um like i guess they like if that were the issue then i guess look elsewhere because that's not the <laughs> biggest one um but yeah i don't know I, I i think that she was great and it's kind of a bummer that she's gonna leave because i i think that she did a great job but i am excited to see who comes on next for sure yeah. And then moving on to the third topic, staying in the DC realm of things, the Snyder Cut is officially coming. It will be coming to HBO Max at some point in 2021, and that's really all we know about it so far. We don't know, are they going to release it all in one big chunk as the full three-hour movie? Are they going to put it out in bits and pieces? Uh, how, how much more post-production? Are they going to have to do with the rest of the Snyder Cut? Are they going to have to go and uh, re-record some dialogue? But uh, what do you think about about this so far? And then do you think they're going to release it all at once? Or maybe do some more episodic since it's over three hours long? Uh, I mean, personally, I would hope that they would do it all at once, just like a regular movie. 
Um, that's I really want. That's what I really want to see. And I mean, I you know, you guys know me. I'm definitely more of a DC fan than a Marvel fan. But um, but I'm hoping that this is what gets like this movie to be how it was supposed to be. Um, you know, and because it was just it was disappointing, and, and it's hard for me to say that. But even I think it was just it wasn't bad in my opinion. It was just it could have been a lot better. And I'm hoping that this is what um, you know, cut some things, bring in some new things, and hopefully it can be everything that everybody wanted it to be. I'm having my a hard time wrapping my brain around episodic little things as opposed to a movie. Yeah. Like, the, will that feel disjointed? And how was that? I, I'm just having a hard time wrapping my mind about how that even works, like episodic things that attach to the actual movie. But what I what I am hearing that's really enticing me is Darkseid, because he was supposed to be envisioned as the actual villain. Uh, mention actually maybe having some mentioned or even having uh, how Jordan or Green Lantern because they had the part with like the Green Lanterns. I heard maybe even Martian Manhunter would be in it. Uh, I think you guys might have seen a scarier look for Steppenwolf that they envisioned, and uh, it's going to cost far less than actual making a movie. But boy, that that uh, DC and H HBO is actually sharing shelling out the money for this is amazing and this is kind of like the last few years have been the year of fans demanding stuff and fans getting stuff yeah and we got it with yeah. sonic and we now we're gonna with this so it, it's great w will this be a double-edged sword of demanding stuff because now you got all these people coming out of the woodwork you got david air going oh over here i have a cut too <laughs> and then another person goes oh well i have a cut of a movie too yeah, but, uh, we, like we know, there's apparently a cut of Revenge of the Sith that is also like three plus hours as well. People are like, oh, release it, Disney. And Disney like, Plus, oh yeah. God. Yeah, and but, you know, the great thing about this O2 is this, HBO is doing this because they're like, ah, yes, more subscribers because they know all, even if they only get it for a month, there's going to be a ton of DC fans that are going to subscribe to HBO Max to watch the Snyder Cut when it comes out, whenever it comes out in 2021. And yeah. Yeah, I, that that is the one. I'm really interested to see what it will do uh, for the original Justice League for its reception, and then just the DC EU as a whole. Because while while you, they've had some more recent ones that have been more well received, they kind of just you know stumbled out of the gates with with Man of Steel and Batman v Superman and Justice League. Outside, like outside of Wonder Woman, it, like their first four films weren't received very well, and so then Wonder Woman was like the the outlier but more recently the, the reception has been a lot more positive with with everything else so it'd be interesting to see if this can also kind of just help catapult it up you know i don't see it getting to what we have with avengers and all that but it can at least help it to where it's not as viewed as poorly as as it is right now yeah i i'm, I'm kind of with court on this that i am a little worried that this is this means it's the future of of being a fan you know and like that it did good with Sonic. It's probably going to do with the Snyder Cut. But I mean, how many more times is, or how many times are the fans going to demand something until things just go off the rails and they're worse, or um, things are completely changed around in in a sense that's like, I don't know. I, I I'm just worried about what it means for being a fan of of things in the future when we have such a like. I think it's good that we have a voice, but I I'm, I'm worried that it means that we're gonna not every be able fan to change a voice. Things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Actually, and Jim Carrey touched on this when Sonic. Really? He actually wanted the original uh, mutant, mutant Sonic to be. I mean, I think he didn't. I think he just touched on it, but he's like, if we give him so much power, it could be a dangerous weapon. I mean, that is true, but I just don't know. Yeah, I, I think that I think the Sonic. I think the Sonic thing was like a um, a like proof that it's possible to be used for good but it worries me about what it can do in the future you know like i think i definitely think that the sonic situation was far and away the the best like the best possible outcome as far as what the fans were demanding um and i get where jim carrey's coming from yeah like like i i get it like it, it definitely if the fans can do this what else can they do and that's kind of where i'm coming from it's like yeah that's great that they did that but like let's leave it at that you know um it's good that nobody was trying to change anything about eggman or about you know um and any of the other characters in that movie and now we're getting the snyder cut which to a lesser extent is kind of like it's not as much the fans as it is just the the people that worked on it that know that there's more um and they're doing a little bit of uh of reshooting i think didn't they say that they were I, 
they haven't confirmed anything as far as I know, but like they oh, might okay. have to do some stuff. Well, they're gonna have to go and they're gonna have to redo some special effects. And, and and what makes the Snyder Cut a little different than say, you know, like them redoing the last season of Game of Thrones because people hmm. didn't like how that show ended, or right. or episode eight of Star Wars is, you know, like Snyder's vision wasn't able to fully come to fruition because he had to step down when. He had the family tragedy, and Josh right. Sweden had to come in and, and finish up. So it's a little different with his take because, like, he had his movie, and he was getting there before the, the – where it's something like redoing Game of Thrones because fans didn't like how what happened right. with certain characters. But it, it's – but it is a, a slippery slope, and yeah, sure, it was good for Sonic. It probably will be good for for Justice League, but how many other things will this be good for? And how many things will this be bad for? Right. Yeah. And and I mean, I didn't like it last season of Game of Thrones either. But the people that are like demanding that they re remake it, I'm like, no. Like, it's done. It's over with. We wash our hands of it. Now let's like, it'll be Move that on. way forever. And that's just how it is. You know, it sucked, but. That's how it is sometimes. That sometimes that's how it be. So yep. it <laughs> people be. will think there's infinite reserves of money for companies. Yeah. Right. And it's like a, a poor final season of Game of Thrones or a poor Star Wars, like people who don't like episode eight or nine, doesn't ruin the previous seasons or the other Star Wars movies for you. Like, yeah, you may not like the new Star Wars, but you still have episode four, five, and six, or you still have episode right. one, two, and three if you like though like you still have seasons, what, one through seven or one through six, however many seasons there are Game of Thrones. So you still have the first seasons of Game of Thrones. You don't have to worry about the final one. Uh, Absolutely. If you, like, you know, people people ignore the, the most, the season nine of Scrubs because it's, it doesn't exist to them, you know, and, <laughs> but. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad that this is happening, but I'm really cautious of what the fans have power over in the future. So we'll see, I guess. For sure. Uh, and then moving on to our fourth new news topic, uh, Ubisoft did tease the re-release of the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World video game. This one uh, is one that I am hoping for. So there was this, a yeah. there was a tie-in game for Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. It was like a, a beat 'em up, uh, similar to something like a, like a Streets of Rage or like the Simpsons arcade game, and. It was, it, was, it, was a, it was a good game, and I, I played the demo of it, and I really enjoyed it, and I never got around to buying it, and I wish I had, because uh, in December of 2014, Ubisoft delisted the game from both stores, and so it was never clear why it was taken down, but it was most likely due to licensing issues, and since that game was digital only, there's no like way people can play those games outside of ones who downloaded it at some point before December 30th, 2014 and still had it installed on their PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360s because outside of that, you can't play it. And so uh, the Academy uh, Twitter account has been doing some like watch watch parties and like people have been live tweeting stuff of like that. And so Brian Lee O'Malley, the, uh, the author of the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels, he... Uh, he was in there with the watchlog as well, and during the movie, he tweeted that Ubisoft should bring back the Scott Pilgrim game, and then Ubisoft replied to it with the uh, the thinking emoji, like the hmm one. And so, I am hoping this comes because like this is a great game. It got a uh, you know it, it got a lot of good got a, got a good review scores, and it was a ton of fun. And I just want it back. So, what about what are you guys' thoughts on us potentially maybe getting this lost game back? I am super pumped. This is like my bread and butter. I love fighting beat em up games. You know that. I actually have it on my 360, and I kind of want to break that out. I was lucky to grab onto the game. Not. I w kind of really wish they would have a release, and maybe we will get one. Um, now that they're thinking about it, Brian Leo Malley's super cool. I uh, used to read this thing called Wizard Magazine um, that was out for years for comic books and pop culture. And so, uh, slightly before the actual movie, I started reading and sh uh, the uh, graphic no or the comic books, graphic novels, whatever you would call them for Scott Pilgrim. Uh, really getting into that, so I had anticipation for the movie. I love the movie; it's got a fantastic cast, uh, soundtrack. The actual video game's got a soundtrack, a, a sweet uh, eight-bit chip tune soundtrack by Anamana Gucci, which is a fantastic name for a band. Um, so I'm very excited to either break out my 360 or just wait for it to be released. But hopefully, fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers right? crossed, yes. 
I'm I'm uh, less excited just because I don't have as much of a tie to it as you guys do, but that doesn't mean that I'm not looking forward to experiencing it for the first time. Um, I I want to know more because like like hearing you guys explain it and kind of the few things that I've seen online um, have really been the only exposure I've had to this game. Uh, I'd seen the movie and I'd seen a uh, and I'd read the comic book that Court um, recommended to me a few years ago, but I didn't Dang, I even know there was. <laughs> I yeah. forgot I recommended that. Um... Yeah, um, but I didn't even know there was a uh, video game of it um, until all this came out. So um, I'm looking forward to learning more and um, hopefully hoping to maybe experience it for myself. Yeah, it, it's it's great. It was on IGN did an article last year, and it was the uh it was a, it was a bunch of games that were licensed they did right it was like nine licensed games that got it right and five that didn't and this was one of the the nine along with goldeneye and uh simpsons and run and south park and sick of truth as ones that got it right and yeah it's like i got eight like a bunch of seven and a half eight nine out of tens and so and just like the, you know this could definitely be a good discussion for uh, for a future episode but we really need a good way to archive video games like we have with other media because something like this this is has been basically gone for five and a half years uh almost six years we have other things like the, like the the pt demo that was for the silent hills reboot that ended up getting canceled when sadeo kojima got let go from konami and another one where that like that was a a thing that people really liked and you cannot get that demo on the playstation 4 anymore unless you had it pre-installed before it was delisted in 2014 or 15 and like we need something like this and i think that could definitely be a, a good topic for another day about why we need a, a better way to archive games like we have with, with film and tv show so we don't have a situation like we ran into with some older tv shows like doctor who where there's just lost episodes where we just have video games that are just lost because there's no there's no digital versions of it anymore or it went out of you know it went out of print and all the copies are not salvageable so awesome if also if your uh, system fails you get the red ring of death your your it just goes kaput you lose it i think essentially yeah if i you have something digital like this uh, yeah since it's delisted i don't think you'd be able to go and re-download it so yeah it'd be one that's it's just gone and that's just a bummer so but then moving on to our final news topic of the week uh, this I know will make Johnny happy as Walk Off the Earth will be taken over for the Pokemon theme. So Johnny, why don't you quickly nerd out to us about uh, about this? Yeah. So um, the um, there's a new Pokemon series that's coming out about uh, Generation Eight um, because they're never going to be done making um, Pokemon games or TV shows. And um, and a few weeks ago, um, uh, Walk Off the Earth had announced that they are going to be singing the theme song for Pokemon. And I don't know if I've actually ever talked about Walk Off the Earth on the podcast before, but it is my favorite band, um, and uh, and uh, I'm not like a huge uh, Pokemon watcher anymore. But the fact that my favorite band is is um, doing the theme song for a show that I loved as a kid, um, it, I'm definitely gonna jump back into it and watch this newest season. Um, it, uh, but even though they announced that a few weeks ago that they were doing the theme song, it was only very recently that they actually um, showed what the theme song was, and it's called "The Journey Starts Today" because the um, the Pokemon show is called Pokemon Journeys, um, and uh, it they I watched an interview that they talked about that they listened to some of the previous um, Pokemon theme songs, like the Pokemon intros, and they wanted to make it very Pokemon-esque. And uh, they, they, um, the uh, writers or producers of the Pokemon show came back and said, no, 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 we don't want you to make it sound like Pokemon. We wanted to make it sound like Walk Off the Earth. And so they were like, oh, okay, cool. So they revamped it, they changed everything around, and it does sound a lot like them. And I love, I love it. It's, it, and not only that, but like it fits in um, I think it fits in just well. Like it, it's a little, it's a little like weird for me because I'm hearing some of my favorite um, singers. But uh, so like I can, I know where this comes from. Whereas before it, it wasn't. Um, I they were just kind of no names to me. But um, but yeah, it gets me really excited that um, that it's two worlds crossing that I never even considered would. Um, you know, like I never would have imagined Pokemon and Walk Off the Earth in the same sentence, let alone doing this before so um 
it, it's more it, it's 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 less big news um, than it is uh, more me you're just really happy. I'm just really happy. Yeah, it's just it's just me nerding out about this one particular thing. That's um, so it's kind of random, but it's super big for me personally. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited, and um, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna as soon as it comes out on Netflix. I believe I want to say June twelfth, maybe. Um, I, I could be wrong about that particular date, but it's coming on Netflix in June, and I'm probably going to binge the entire season in June. So, yeah, I'm just really excited about it. There we go. Hey, but speaking of that, you know, crossovers, I can convince you this week's <laughs> oh. topic of the week. Look at Johnny you know, the nice transition there. So <laughs> just another just fun, goofy, you know, off-the-wall idea we had just to kind of bridge the gap as there still isn't too much news going on right now in the nerd world. A crossover idea between two pop culture properties what media medium would we pick them in and then we'll kind of explain it similar to our dream sequel video game last week so court why don't you start us off what would you do all right um i would uh, do a crossover that i don't think has been done before and should have been done by now in some fashion whether it be comic books would be the logical thing to go but i want to keep it cartoon uh it's ghostbusters and Scooby Doo, I didn't create a good name for it, so I don't know. I don't Scoob have a good Busters. Scoob Busters. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would like that. We could do that. Uh, Scoob Busters. So my idea would be a cartoon in the style of the uh, Zombie Island oh, uh, cool. kind of animation, or maybe even what's new, or is it a uh, What's new Scooby Doo? What's yeah, so, so late '90s or early 2000s yes. animation style. So it's not as yeah. full of all the weird uh, errors and quirks of the '60s Scooby Doo, mm -hmm. but it's not some of the more weird interpretations oh. they've done with the designs of the more recent ones. Yeah, I don't like the Thundercats go Teen Titans look of that new stuff. No, <laughs> get that, get that out of here. Okay, but that's just me uh, being old man, get off my yard type stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so basically the premise would be that the Scoob Gang, uh, the Mystery Incorporated crew, would go to New York um, on vacation. I would assume that uh, Velma, being a well-rounded young woman and knowledge of the world, would know of uh, the Ghostbusters. Maybe she's friends with Janine. Maybe we'll put this into a modern uh, kind of thing where she's... Um, I don't know. Maybe she, maybe Janine is on Twitter or something. She follows her. Uh, but they both have kind of a wry sense of humor and they're smarty pantses. Uh, so they would stop by the firehouse and find out that uh, things are all going to hell. That maybe a monster opens up the uh, containment unit where they have all the ghosts, and this particular monster is out there trying to possess people. Uh, they would suit up in the the Ghostbuster jumpsuits. You had you would have Scooby Doo rocking a jumpsuit, and maybe even having a proton pack where he could either activate it with his mat. I think he's Scooby stood up before, right? He's done all kinds of good probably. Things. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I don't know. He could activate it somehow, but whether or not, or he could carry the trap with him. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Um, Slimer in the see. I'm pulling a little bit from this thing called. Um, the real Ghostbusters, the it was a cartoon from the late 80s, early 90s. They had to call it the real Ghostbusters because there was actually a Ghostbusters live action and cartoon before the Ghostbusters came out. Oh. Um, and so I would bring in some of the voice cast from that that's still currently with us uh, from that old show. And Slimer was kind of their mascot pet. Um, so he he would interact with Scooby. I would have a dream sequence. Uh, where Scooby dreams of a giant 100-foot uh, Scooby snack that's terrorizing New York, all uh, the State Puff Marshmallow <laughs> Man. Uh, we would retread some of the things that were in Ghostbusters, the movie. Uh, I would have uh, Shaggy get possessed by this kind of the Gozer uh, evil force that would make him ultra super shaggy that we saw and all the, the meme that was out where they have to take <laughs> down an ultra super... Dragon Ball Z esque Shaggy <laughs> and get the get the ghost out of him. They would just bust together. They would train. There would be an eighties uh, training montage. Uh, walk off the earth. Hey, that, throw them on the soundtrack. <laughs> Why not? Some more crossover. It makes everything better. So 
Yeah, I would throw them on the soundtrack. Maybe they could do the Ghostbusters Ray Parker, or they could team up with Ray Parker, another crossover within, within <laughs> a crossover. Whoa. Hell, give me, give me a video game, too. Throw in go. a video game. <laughs> give me a comic. So let's make this multi-platform, because uh, Ghostbusters have already uh, crossed over with uh, Transformers in the comics. Oh. And so Optimus wow. Prime looked... Optimus Prime had the colors of the Ecto-1. Oh, and another idea is, speaking of Ecto-1, slap on the color scheme of the Ecto-1 on the uh, mystery machine. There you go. And, but and the, you have, I you have, have one money. question, though. Yes. Is Fred wearing his ascot tie? I feel like he is. I feel like, but they give him a new one, and it has, like, the Ghostbusters crossed out Ooh, symbol. There you go. Yeah, because so yeah. he didn't have it in What's New Scooby-Doo. That was, like, I, one of the first times yeah. they really took that away. Yeah, I would say, like... Uh, I would say Daphne's like uh, after he, they had the montage of getting suit up and train. I would think Daphne would pull it out and say like, "Oh, Fred, you're forgetting something," and <laughs> hand him that. It would be like an ah. Sunshine would come down and the heavens would open up, and he would have his superpower ascot. Probably doesn't think for him. Makes him look stylish. And so those are just my general ideas. I tried to go with lightning fast. <laughs> I I like that idea. I, oh, I yeah. said I, I can't believe this hasn't been done before. Uh, yeah, in, totally. in anything uh, that's I, I you, you can find some images online there is one that looks like there was a comic maybe but mm -hmm. i can't really tell if this was just a fan mock-up or uh or if this was just a just something fun so it i i would like love yeah it seems, it seems like the perfect thing that should have already happened if it hasn't already and it just yeah it, like the fact it, it it definitely should sometime in our lifetime um, happen because it's kind of the perfect uh, the perfect two teams that would come together and cross. Like, if anything, for a crossover, whatever makes sense, it's this. For sure, yeah. I, I, I don't get why we don't have this already. I'd even throw in a cameo, uh, just a little cameo from Supernatural guys because I know they've already had a crossover. And I yeah, would have I was going to say, yeah. Of, yeah. If they plenty can, of making crossover of with Supernatural. Dude. Yes. <laughs> Plenty of dissing on old Scrappy Doo. Maybe he's even a. Uh, he's already been. He can a villain, be the villain. Yeah, Again. why not? A ghost dog. There Scrappy Doo. <laughs> there we go. Because he's dead. Because they never. Okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> Nobody likes him. <laughs> yeah, so move on. Uh, so I will I will go now then with mine. Um, I, I, this is going to be shocking. I'm going to do a Sonic crossover. Wow. <gasps> I know. What? Uh, I, I've, I've, I've talked a little bit about it before on the, on the podcast, but I want a Mario and Sonic crossover that is not an Olympic minigame collection. I want an actual Mario and Sonic where they have to work together in it. And so, you know, I'm, they can figure some weird way out that Eggman but, and But Bowser. didn't you play the story mode of the newest Olympic games? Um, I'm, I've <laughs> played some of it, and it's boring. It, it is didn't boring. satisfy you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer that they... Uh, that they took the idea of like a time machine to make him like retro because what I would do in the game is I would want to have it where similar to a Sonic Generations you would have a you'd have gameplay styles like a classic and like a modern and so like the classic style for Sonic I would get Christian Whitehead's crew to come in like with, and have it be like Sonic Mania it looks like a 16-bit Sega Genesis style sprite work game where it plays like Sonic 1, 2, 3, CD, Knuckles. You are uh, speaking Mania. my language. <laughs> so have, have it play like the classic games, like down to it's using 16-bit graphics, and you know, they can get T-Lopes to do the soundtrack again, and basically like a, a spiritual successor to Mania, if they don't do a Mania 2. And then have Mario have his be in a similar a 2D style, in, uh, I, and I would do more of an 8 or 16-bit style, not a new Super Mario style, so have it be more in the... In the one, two, three, or, or world, maybe world since we're doing Sonic, so 16 bits, and have it so it plays like Super Mario World, just made in, you know, 2021 or 2022, whatever. And so it, it still plays like the classic games, so, you know, they, if they can get the physics down as close as they can to where, you're, you know, you'll have your fire mushroom, your your cape feather, whatever they want to do, but have some of the, the, the best power-ups of the game. And then your modern style, you do a, a boost formula like we have in Generations Colors, Unleashed, with Sonic, just don't, you know, let, don't just make it bad like Forces. And then for Mario, since doing more of the sandbox style of Odyssey would be kind of would would not really make as much sense as what we're getting with the other three. Do like a, a 3D world, so it's something mm. where it still is a get 
get to the flagpole, but it's in the 3D, and so he has some more, more 3D moves, and he has some of the 3D world and 3D land type of power-ups and stuff like that. You know, obviously the story mode, they can figure some weird way out that Eggman and Bowser are working together and kidnaps Peach and who knows what else they'll do. But something <laughs> where, like, something where they have to work together, and it'd be fun to see, like, Mario running around in City Escape or Green Hill Zone or Chemical Planners, and then Sonic somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. It would just that's be a ton was, of... That's what I was about to say. Could he run up rings? Yeah, that, Mario, that, that'd be tight. Yeah, and that'd be fun. It's like if each level, like, like so if you're playing a Sonic level in the Mario world, instead of rings, it's the coins, but it acts like your rings, and oh. and vice versa. Like that, or, or Mario can get I guess the when I, elemental when, when I met... Yeah, when I met Ring, I meant like a. I guess yeah. is what I, I mean. I mean, they could like they could figure some weird way out yeah. to to make that work, but you know, give Sonic some of Mario's power ups, give Mario some of Sonic's power ups, so then you can have it where, like, imagine a, a fireball Sonic, so <laughs> he can spin dash and then like a bunch of fireballs come out, or that's so cool. Or Mario will can get the elemental shields from Sonic Three and can do a double jump, or he can do a little dash with the fire one. So. You know it's funny because Super Mario is just the version of Mario that's, like, not small. He's just the regular size. But Super Sonic is, like, a god. So it would be really funny to see, like, if Sonic got Super Mario's Mushroom powers some... and Sonic became technically, quote, Super Sonic. He was just a regular size Sonic. But Mario becomes Super Mario and he's, like, a yellow Gold. god that's just, yes. like, fly, flying in the air. Um, yeah, it would. Th yes, really I want to cool. see the Chaos Emeralds affect Mario and what it would. Happen. <laughs> yes. But it'd be cool because they could do crossover stuff. You know, you can have, you can have just some goofy ways of, you know, Luigi and Tails interacting, and as long as it makes more sense than what's going on in the Olympic game ones, where it's just like, mm -hmm. hey, Luigi, let's work together, and just like, okay, <laughs> Tails, and it's just like, why? And then they <laughs> run around Tokyo and just skateboard because they want to rescue Sonic and all the other weird stuff that's going on with that game but yeah it I would, would just... love to see like the interactions between um, a character in Mario that's the equivalent to a character in Sonic so like if you saw like um, Amy and Peach interacting with each other or like Blaze and Daisy were interacting with each other um, that would be really cool or if you saw like Wario and Waluigi interacting with Team Chaotix like that would be that'd be cool. really funny just to see too <laughs> I'm but, also yeah. picturing a I'm picturing a Mecha Bowser. The yeah. Oh yeah. Mix. Oh yeah. Oh another thing. Yeah. You could have, you could have Robotnik, uh, like roboticized like as Eggman stuff with some of the Mario movies, like a Badnik Goomba. Like that'd be interesting yeah, to see too. So like cool. like a a mashup of the two. It it would be a ton of fun. It still does not make sense why they have not made this. It's mainly because Sonic Team's incompetent and doesn't know to do the <laughs> series. But like this would print money. Yeah. Both Especially of the, both of what you guys have talked about are just like these should have already happened. <laughs> exactly. So when they do make them, we'll have to be like listen to our podcast that we recorded in May of 2020 and uh, give us some royalties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we came up with it first. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then what about you, Johnny? Do you have any uh, fun ideas about some some crossovers you'd want to see? Yeah. So mine is not one that I've um, thought uh, you know a lot about. I wanted to be a little less obvious, you know, because I I could mention Banjo or Donkey Kong and. Um, and that would just be, I mean, I could talk forever about that. So I wanted to pick something that I think would make a lot of sense, but not necessarily be something that I would immediately think of. So I came up with Legend of Zelda crossing over with Pokemon. And, um, and I, I, I think Legend of Zelda honestly could, could it cross over with almost any, um, um, uh, Nintendo franchise, popular Nintendo franchise, and it would work if they did it right. And I don't think Pokemon's any different. The way I envision it would be something sort of like, um, there would be two battle systems, um, but you would play as Link, as always, um, but you would be Link, um, like the worlds would somehow um, converge in a way that, you know, in, similar to Board how Mario game. and Sonic's, yeah, somehow, they, they, they converge, Ganondorf gets Pokemon control, I don't know. Um, I like Sky so, Portals. Sky yeah, just yeah, open. that always works. Ganon yeah. sneezes, and then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. Pikachu appears. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it would take place in Hyrule, but Pokemon would just start appearing in Hyrule. Um, and uh, I think you would play as Link, and you would um, uh, it would be a sort of like a normal like puzzle solving action adventure game. But there would also be instead of the usual enemies that would come up, there would be half of the you know Hyrule enemies, and half would be Pokemon. And if you would interact with um, like uh 
um, so you might come across, like in a dungeon, you might come across a, a room that is um, where there's Pokemon, and Link knows because of his interactions with Pikachu through Smash Bros, I guess, even though he's beating the shit out of Pikachu, um, he knows that Pokemon, um, he should not be hurting them, but the Pokemon should. So maybe he can go and catch different Pokemon. He catches Pikachu, he catches Squirtle, Bulbasaur, whatever, and he's the trainer, and he fights these shadow versions of, of evil possessed Pokemon that are possessed by Ganondorf. Um, and so you have a regular um, Pokemon-style kind of gameplay, um, in this Zelda game, but then you go into the next room and there's like a Bokoblin and you fight him as Link instead of the Pokemon. Um, or maybe it's the other way around where Link is the one fighting the Pokemon and your Pokemon are the ones that help you in battle against the other high, highly in, um, uh, you know, enemies. Um, I, I just think that it'd be a really cool concept that, um, you know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't thought of it too much as, like, as much as you guys have, but uh, your own respective um, ideas. But I, I think that it's definitely a crossover that if it happens, it would be a very big deal because um, the two series are very different. But I, I feel like there's something about it that could click pretty easily. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like, it, it, it definitely was one that caught me off guard. I, I was I was expecting some sort of, like, banjo and Donkey Kong crossover or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, this, this is one that it, it makes sense. Like... It, there's a way that you can make it work, and like I mean, yeah, you can do it Zelda with almost anything, and it would work. But the Pokemon one, I think, gives it a really interesting angle because, like, there are already some light RPG elements that are in the Zelda games, and then like you know, Pokemon's one of the most popular RPG type of games ever. Like, yeah, just the, the reach that those two have. I mean, Breath of the Wild and Sword and Shield are some of the highest selling games on the Switch, and you know, each each Zelda and Pokemon game on their respective systems. Are almost always some of the highest selling games so like yeah this game would print money if they were able to find a way to to make it work and it would be interesting to see like yeah how do you how do you do it how do you mix in the worlds together but it's one if they mix the gameplay style so you do a little bit of what you do in pokemon a little bit of what you do in breath of the wild together then it'd be one that it can i think mesh really well and you know it and have that nintendo polish so then it would you know be enjoyable it's another one just like nintendo why aren't you doing this? It's not as it's it's not as obvious as a Scooby Doo Ghostbusters or a Mario and Sonic non Olympic game, but it still is one that's just like, why haven't you thought of this Nintendo? And then the right. thing too is they do this, and then that could lead to other things where we do see Mario crossover with something outside of Smash that's not, oh hey, Isabelle is playable in Mario Kart, or you know you could you could put on a Metroid mask in Paper Mario the Origami King. So yeah, there's just there's there's so many. Um like possibilities that could happen in in any of these series that just haven't and the fact that there's so like mario kart i mean when when link and animal crossing characters and splatoon characters are in are in mario kart that was a big deal and that should not be a big deal like it should just kind of happen a little like naturally but it was the first time in a long time that um i mean first time and i can really even imagine that a nintendo crossover has happened like that before and so for a major for a game to be built around a crossover is just seemingly seemingly unfathomable for nintendo to process or want to contemplate yeah. so i mean and they, um, they sort of did it then with with mario and rabbits so why not do it with your own franchises now and not have to give yeah. a different company on it because and, then and if they can if they can do that with rabbits you would think it would be easier to do it with their own companies exactly you know? and then too they can keep the game 60 bucks as long as they want because you know, Mario and Rabbids is the only Mario game you can ever consistently get on sale because Ubisoft's like, okay, we're going to discount it to 20 bucks again. And <laughs> Nintendo's just like, Which, eh. side note, is a steal. Mario and Rabbids is such a great game that if you're going to be able to get it for 20 bucks, you need to get it for 20 bucks right away because it is a, it is a steal. And I just got it. Team Sonic Racing for 20 bucks. Uh, speaking of steals, uh, it, should, it still should it. be. No, I did not steal it. It still should be up by the time this episode goes live, but Night Trap, the old Sega CD, what? the old Sega CD game what? is on sale on the Switch right now for $1.64. All right. I'm, I've always wanted to, I've watched plenty of videos analyzing it and it's awesome acting. It's soundtrack. fantastic acting. Oh yeah. That movie's great. Never, never seen a better acted film uh, in my life. But full yeah, that, motion video at its finest. That thing is also on sale right now too. So you have more reasons to go get that but a dollar is generous for that <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah I, I yours johnny was the least 
like mm -hmm. how has this not been done before out of the three we gave but it, like I said, it's still one that's just like how has this not been done before so right definitely <laughs> definitely some really good ideas and and you know if somehow someone from warner brothers or nintendo or sega are listening to this podcast well they first are off, thank you game freaks off, come on man get on this and then second off do this and then just you know, I, and then send us send us a yeah, send know, us the bill send, send well, us the mean, check just send us a free copy I don't I don't need you know, yeah. send us a review code and we'll review it on the show <laughs> and you know I, you know you can put our names in the credits you don't need to send us you know, royalties or anything I just want a free copy yes, of the game do. and my name in the credits for giving <laughs> you guys the idea but I need a, a special thing too. I yes. need a cute Pikachu that wears a Link outfit with yes. a wooden sword. Oh my gosh, yes. And I need every time you catch the Pokemon to have the classic item jingle, <laughs> the sound. I just need Absolutely. some of those things in my life. Yes. Maybe even a dungeon, uh, a dungeon creator like they tried to do in uh, yeah. Awakening. Oh yeah, that's another one. Something good. How something... would you do the art style, Johnny? Would you do something kind of more like a Breath of the Wild and then a Breath of the Wild style for the Pokemon? Would you do more of, like, we, we saw in the Link Awakening remake? Um, I would do, like, I, I, Pokemon's never been super realistic, um, and I wouldn't want anything that's hyper-realistic, but I would definitely want something that's more along the lines of, um, like, the either, for, for the Zelda side of it, I would want either um, Ocarina of Time HD or Twilight Princess. Um, I don't think I want the Breath of the Wild art style because it, it looks too much like a like a the, like this the cell the cell shaded look yeah yeah it's kind of like a like a painting almost mm -hmm. um but i would want something a little bit more grounded and um and i and i in um ocarina of time hd and uh and twilight, twilight princess, princess yeah. have have that and so I, for the zelda side of it that's the art style i would want but for the pokemon side i guess just try to make it as close to that as possible like like i said i don't want anything that's hyper realistic like i don't want a a a, a ghastly that's or a haunter that's like actually terrifying Oof, but i want no. i want something that's less cartoony than than pokemon is and a little bit more realistic so you want so. kind of in between what we have now and what we got in detective pikachu then basically so a yeah, little more realistic yeah. Realistic, but not as realistic as they're portrayed in Detective Pikachu with, with yeah. like the realistic fur and all that. I don't, yeah, I don't want so, like maybe a little bit of fur, but I don't want like all that much. Um, and but definitely not Mr. Mime creepy. No, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not Mr. Mime. And and obviously it would have to be the original Gen One Pokemon just to keep it simple. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I yeah, I, I would want something that's not cartoony and not creepy. <laughs> there we go. All right, Nintendo, your move. We'll we'll take uh <laughs> we'll take some review codes for you and we'll talk about it on the episode. So <laughs> that'll move us on then now into recommendations. Uh, since we had our special guest court last week, we actually had two recommendations, and so I recommended a video on Sonic Extreme and just the troubled development that that game had. So I wanted to know your guys' thoughts on that video. Go ahead. You want me to go? <laughs> yeah. uh, it was very, uh, it was very in depth, and I like, uh, I do like documentaries, video game. Doc that's the stuff that I'm getting into is more of like your gaming, gaming historian type uh, documentaries. I want to soak up all the knowledge. I want to know about the games that were fantastic, utterly trash, and the games that didn't get made. Uh, so this definitely falls in that. Um, the things that really stood out to me, it, well, they went into history. They went into all kinds of good history of the early games, but the things stood out to me was just a chaotic work environment. Um, you had the, uh, you just had a lot of uh, egos going on there, and you had sickness. You had sickness to the point of doctors telling these two programmers that were very talented that uh, you might want to pump your brake, bud, because you're going to die. They're working you so hard, um, you're gonna you're gonna die. And I have some nost nostalgic uh, elements to me. With I, I used to rent a Sega Saturn, and I always wondered why we didn't get any cool uh, Sonic. What are you talking thing. about? Sonic R is on there. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah, I like you said, no cool right, Sonic no is. no cool Sonic to be found on the Saturn there. Um, <laughs> I probably would have liked that back in the day when I was a kid, but I wasn't too much into Virtual Fighter and stuff like that. Uh, 
but yeah, it just it was really really cool to see the dedication and the setbacks, the little successes. It looked like it was almost gonna happen. It was like a tug of war in that mm-hmm. documentary, and I'll, I'll keep it at that. Johnny, yeah, I um I I, I thought it was really interesting because I had never even heard of the game to be honest. But um all of the 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 stuff about um the 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 two programmers that were getting sick that was really kind of like it was making me like my job a lot more because I was like, wow, at least I'm not like working myself, literally working myself to death, you know? Um, and so it just it, like all of that stuff that was happening, it was kind of, um, it was so depressing, but I was kind of like, Oh, I didn't know. I'd never heard of Sonic extreme, but I'm not the biggest, like, like I'm not, well, I'm not as big a Sonic fan as Luke, um, just slightly less. Um, but uh, I was like, Oh, if they'd worked this hard, I'm so excited to see what the result is of the, of the game. Um, and then at the end they were like, yeah, and then they scrapped the project. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of a bummer that they, like, put, some, some of them put their lives on the line for this game, and, and like you said, there was a lot of, um, uh, like, I wouldn't say inner turmoil, inner, like, between the staff, because it was mostly, um, targeted towards just one or two people, but, um, that, like, that said that after a while they just got fired, um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It just it, it seemed like there was so much work to be put into this, and that they never they never finished it is really a, a shame. You know, they I I would love to see a modern version of whatever it was supposed to be come out. Well, like well, we uh, so we sort uh, of had a modern version uh, with Lost World, which yeah yeah oh it actually turns out because this is not going to be a fully formed game, but actually. Like everything else, it's uh, been recreated a little bit in Dreams. I just read. Yeah, yeah, it's been created in Dreams, and uh, and then Chris Sen, he has dumped some of the different uh, some of the different demos online over the years, and then more have, mm. have been found. Some ROMs have been found that you can play some of the different stuff. So yeah, it, it's it's slowly sort of been worked on, but I guess in a way, Lost World is kind of the spiritual successor to it. Mm-hmm. But man, one of the crazy things on that video is imagine getting fired from your job because you're only working 10 hours a day i know oh. i i like i when they said that i was like they said that he was kind of a jerk and i was like i guess it's one of those you had to be there kind of situations but i mean if you're not giving it like 150 percent and you're only giving it 110 percent, i'm like I, you have to, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily like like I, I get that he was less committed than the rest of them but that's not to say he wasn't committed you know so mm-hmm. i felt a little like like that might have been unfair i mean i wasn't there so i don't know exactly what his attitude was but yeah if he was working like 10 hours a day instead of 16 to 18 hours a day like i don't know necessarily that you know that he should have been fired but whatever yeah i what i did also like too is another one is some of these videos they always like to incorporate some of the other youtube channels they're friends with in the tetris video i gave you guys uh the uh completionist Gerard, he was like one of the voiceover parts, and in this one, Mykonos fan was the voice of Chris Sen, and the Golden Bo- Bolt was a young Mike Wallace, and like those are other couple other channels that I've watched some of their mm-hmm. videos, and it's always fun to see like, hey, I know that that voice, <sighs> but yeah, man, just everything about this game is just like oof, like it's insane that they could not ever get this off the ground running, but. Uh, and then, you know, we, we got all the other stuff they had later on in the epilogue, which I think the craziest one, I mean, Chris then working for Big Red Button for Sonic Boom Rise Lyric was hilarious. That is like, he worked on a canceled game that who knows how it turned out. And then he worked on one of the worst, one of the worst Sonic games ever made. But the other one that got me was, was with Alon, where... Uh, it was a lot. One of the I can't remember which one it was. One no oh no it was, it was Bernie Stolar, who would leave Sega in '99, and he is an executive chairman for Zoom. And when this video came out in November, Zoom was still pretty minor, and now you know yeah. Zoom is one of the you know biggest platforms out there for video chatting. So it was a yeah. ton of fun. The uh, the one question I have for you guys then too before you guys keep your ratings is if we would have seen this game come out with. Without trouble, this development scene, do you think it would have been good, or do you think we might have seen a Sonic 06 10 years earlier? I, in my opinion, all rushed games are, you know, n- never. Like as the quote they gave people. from, uh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the, um, a, a rushed game is, is never good, but a delayed game has the potential to be good in the future. Um, yeah, like I, 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 I don't know necessarily that it would have been all that great. Um, 
but I mean, it, this the whole time this reminded me of um, Donkey Kong Racing, um, and because that was a Donkey Kong game that was the sequel to Diddy Kong Racing that was scrapped in development. Not necessarily, not even close to the same reasons, but um, that's kind of my own version of Sonic Extreme. And um, and when they said it got canceled, I was like, oh, like it's like a Donkey Kong Racing kind of situation, which had so much potential, but it just didn't pan out. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I don't know necessarily that it would have been great. Um, but, uh, with all, with all the hardships that they suffered through it, it just seems like it, it would, it would have been, it would have been passable, but barely, you know, so. What about you, Court? Do you think a game would have been good or would it have been another one of the dark age Sonic games? <laughs> uh, I would have just, I would have just put it out there. I w I'm sorry, because, like, I love Sega. I mean, first and foremost, I'm, like, a Nintendo fan. I had one when I was four or five. Um, but I did get into Sega, and their 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 fate was kind of sealed from the get-go a little bit. They got into the Saturn, and then their follow-up was Dreamcast. But now, actually, there's love for both of those. And Dreamcast, or, sorry, Saturn just celebrated a, some kind of anniversary. Yeah, Saturn uh, just but, turned 25. Yeah. So uh, lo that's a long story short of saying just yeah, put it out and see what happened for better or for worse. They didn't have a they didn't have a Sonic uh, title except R. Yeah, they had, <laughs> so they they didn't have a mainline Sonic title on the Saturn. So on the Saturn, you had a enhanced port of 3D Blast where they upres the graphics, uh, changed the soundtrack, and changed the special stage. And then they had Sonic Jam, which was a compilation of one, two, three, and Knuckles. And then it had like a, a Sonic World, a little small 3D world you can run around as a Sonic and, and go find like concept art and a bunch of stuff like that. And then Sonic R, which has one of the greatest video game soundtracks of all time, don't at me. <laughs> but yeah, no, no official mainline Sonic game. So there was no mainline Sonic game that wasn't like a spinoff or a compilation or anything after Sonic and Knuckles in 1994 until Sonic Avenger came out in 98 in Japan and 99 internationally. I would have said just sink or swim, put it out there. Maybe our conversation would be like, oh boy, that was pretty bad. Instead of like, uh, it's, it's just a forget it. It's a forgotten part of a video game history. Um, but yeah, I would have just said for better, or for worse, here's uh, this thing. If you like it, cool. Maybe would find some fandom later on. Some things are not really well received at the time maybe there maybe it would have found some kind of fan footing later in the future i don't know but For i sure. would have said just just throw it out there sink or swim and then what were you guys' ratings beyond this before we move on to court's video um i would give this uh 7.5 um out of 10 months to live before you before you die from working Oof. yourself too hard i'd give it a eight out of ten dysfunction is our function <laughs> oh man yeah, just the, what a dysfunctional development that game had. But moving on then to another thing that actually has some nice dysfunction. Quartz video was on the Fantastic Four. A nice, long, almost two-hour video. Uh, you know, I felt like I was watching a movie. Yeah, good on, and short. Just a, a nice retrospective on the Fantastic Four. It was called We Are the Fantastic Four, a retrospective by B-Mask. So, Court, first off, why don't you go, why'd you pick this video before Johnny and I go into our thoughts with it? So I just stumbled upon this guy, and um, I'm a sucker for anything Marvel, and it, it, if it has a retrospective and a good lengthy runtime, well, this is my bread and butter. Um, so I just stumbled upon it, and I, I wanted to see where he was going to go, like how much is he going to diss on the Tim Story movies? Uh, What's, what's he going to even bring new to it that I haven't even heard of? And it uh, looks like the vi the production was done in a couple... Of, like, I think he spent a year or a half or two years. Uh, he had voice actors. Uh, he chronicled a lot of important runs of the comics. And he gave you a, uh, an overview of the characters. He went into a little bit of the history of the mass media products, like the cartoons. And he kind of showed you why you should why you should care about this team that might have a uh, actual a future. Yeah, like for sure. It was it was definitely really interesting. I um, you know, I, it wasn't fully I guess what I expected. I didn't expect it to have as much of the voice actor uh, going through like lines of the comics get his points across. And so that one kind of threw me off guard at first because there's at one point where it seemed like he was only talking for a few minutes, and then it was just like 
bunch of dialogue, and I was like, okay, when are we going to get to more about, like, what made this important besides just showing, like, the interactions that the Human Torch had with, you know, X, Y, and Z and all that. But it was, yeah, it was definitely interesting to see how, you know, just how these characters were, you know, she created and how they were, you know, able to kick off, like, a golden age for Marvel and just all the all the different things that would eventually come with it and then what we got with some of the the more iconic runs that that these series would have and then yet when it comes to the movies they just have never been able to do anything really like as as much as i will defend the 2015 one as a okay movie it still is okay at best it's it's not a it's not a nine percent out of a hundred on rotten tomatoes but it also is you know nowhere near the production value that we had been getting from all the mcu movies at the time and at that point that was right after first class and days of future past had come out with x-men which you know it's seen those two put out a couple good movies again after x3 and uh, origins wolverine so i it was really interesting i really liked this a lot especially once uh once he got started going more into the the big runs and explained it talked about the villains and you know why why doom is so important and so I definitely it, enjoyed this. It definitely paints Doom as somebody that's so, so important to the not larger... As, not as bad as he was in the movies. Yeah. It's like, oh, hey, look, there's Doom. Oh, hey, look, this fight scene's five minutes. Oh, movie's over. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that they went um, really in-depth to... Like, I've, I've never been the biggest um, Fantastic Four fan. I just don't know a whole lot about them. I mean, I know who they are, but not at their core. Um, but it was really interesting to get an in-depth perspective on who they are not just like as characters but um also showing like who they are with each other and um and i thought that was really cool because i've always been i've always believed that um character development doesn't happen uh by what in a, by the experiences that a character goes through but character development is formed from who they interact with and and i think that it's really interesting to see you know that the these four characters um that are so different from one another. I mean, it even said that the moment when they said, like, you can attribute each element to each of the four characters, which I thought was a really cool... Um, I thought that was a really cool concept. Um, but, yeah, like, th there's so... Like, four characters that are so different from one another, but love each other, and they are a family, and they're not a team, they're a family. And I thought that was something that was really cool, that they really drove home in this, um, uh, on the character side. Um... That was that was a thing that stood out to me the most um definitely and then they also like i loved that how much they put into showing you who doom was and his interactions um with the team but more so with uh reed richards um i'd never i'd never known really much about um uh is it dr doom yeah, or is it, yeah. okay yeah dr doom but um but uh yeah i never knew that he had like this um like rivalry particularly with uh, Mr. Fantastic. So that was really cool to learn all about that and how they're so alike, but they're so there's like a few things that make them different, and which is like what makes one good and one evil. And I love that that was really cool, a really cool dynamic that it's very hard to uh, replicate in like in storytelling. That apparently they did really well, and from what I could tell, they did really well. So yeah, unlike yeah. the uh, unlike the movies, man, I, I just. <laughs> Even like as I said, even though I do enjoy the 2015 one more than most people do, it's just amazing that this movie somehow just did not work. It, it's like it's it's has it had all the the right things to make it good. It has a good cast with Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara, Jamie Bell. You have the director in James in Josh Trank who did Chronicle. Another I really thought it was going to be a slam dunk. Oh yeah, it, Trank. It, it, yeah, yeah, with, with Trank there, like everything. Made it seem like it was going to be a slam dunk, but whatever happened with the with the development side of things, with the budding heads of the production team, and just just a bad direction, just made this movie fail. And it's so bad because there's so many good elements that could have been on it. I love the like that we ha were having people like Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, and then it just mm -hmm. flopped. And it's just so bad because this I, makes I me so I can only sad. imagine. I can only imagine there'll be a book in the future about what happened on the set because oh yeah probably Trank Trank said a lot of stuff and I think he fought with a lot of producer producers and I think there was a lot of studio interference and yeah stuff I know like that. Trank and uh, Jeremy Slater who was one of the uh, screenplay writers him and, and Simon Kinsberg who also worked on 
uh, some of the uh, X-Men Phoenix. movies. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we're now going to be getting another reboot of the Fantastic Four in the films with, a, uh, with them integrating the MCU now that Disney owns 20th Century Fox. So is there, is there really any actors and actresses that really stand out that you guys would want to see eventually come to the MCU when this does happen in the future? I've I've always been um, on the side that I would want John Krasinski and Emily Blunt to play um, Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman because yes. I mean they're married in real life and so the chemistry would obviously um, go very well on the screen just like in A Quiet Place they were married in real life and they played husband and wife there so obviously it's been proven that they can do a good job together um, so I mean that's just half of the team right there that I think would just be a perfect uh, a perfect fit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't know who that that would be good ones too. I don't know who I'd want as I don't know who I'd want as like the human torch or the thing. Um, it's crazy. Definitely, be, go ahead. Go it's, ahead go it's crazy ahead. because like the human torch in both of the the uh, two thousand five and two thousand fifteen movies have been played by great actors who then went on to do even better mm -hmm. things in the MCU with Chris Evans as Captain America and then Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. Yeah. So it. So I'm sure they'd pick someone else then who uh, would would be able to hopefully do it well. But yeah, I don't know who I'd want as those two. I could, I'd be definitely one I'd want to give some more thought to. But hopefully someone that can play the characters well. What about you, Court? What were you gonna say? Oh, I'm definitely on the camp of like uh, John K and the Blunt. Like as soon as I heard that, I think that's like a slam dunk. Uh, there's this cat named uh, Lucas Till that played Havoc in First Class. Oh yeah. He. I don't know oh, how great yeah. an actor he is, really, um, but uh, I would throw him as maybe Johnny Storm. Yeah, he, yeah, he was great. As ha I, I liked him a lot as as Havoc, you know, even though mm -hmm. we didn't get to see him in the later movies, unfortunately. But, yeah, I think that'd be great oh, to see him. Oh, and he was in um, Hannah Montana, the movie, so, <gasps> oh, so, hey. so we, well, we know hey. we know he's got he's got his acting chops. He's got star, <laughs> yeah. star potential. He could take that. I don't know what kind of character he pay, played, but he has to play like a... He has to play a hotshot uh, guy that likes fame, and he has to play a guy that's really going to get on the of uh, of Peter Parker if Holland comes over and they do some crossover because they've always uh, you heard in the uh, yeah they always they documentary don't, they don't that long. they don't they bicker a lot and so um, so for Reed like an alternative to Reed would be this guy named Billy Crudup, and he was in Watchmen the movie so he played uh, Doctor Manhattan. Post, obviously, um, he played, like, the dude that transforms into Dr. Manhattan. I think he could work as just, like, a like a alternate if we didn't get um, John K. I really want those two. But I also, uh, Ben Grimm, the thing, has to be, obviously, a lot of CGI. But you have to have a Brooklyn Bronx, uh, Yancey Street voice, like a rough voice. And maybe Jeffrey Dean Morgan as at least the voice and then you're, you're gonna have to have ben Grimm a little bit if if they i'd rather not have them even do the, like the go up in space thing I, i'd rather have that in the title and get right to the meat or yeah that, yeah because so we don't need to, we don't need to see it, it it's just like when we got spider-man mc we don't need to see him get bit by the spider again we don't need to see Uncle Ben die again. We've seen it twice already. So just give us something new. Yeah, just give it to it. We're, we're it, it, like the the movie could start like literally. They wake up after it happens, and they're like as they start to figure it out. That that'd be a cool way to, to start the movie. There's a cold open. Bam, they just got their powers. Or another thing is like they're taking a tour through the Baxter Building, and like there's an audience looking at a wall that's showing like the origin. Because they would like, they're all into the publicity and the light, and the town knows who they are. They don't disguise themselves. Mm -hmm. So, like, a whole mural of like that transformation could be like part of a museum inside the Baxter building. And that's how it's portrayed that we get to see the origin real fast. Um, I think that could work. And also, I got a, I want a guy that wasn't really utilized, but he's also been in the um, MCU before, and his name's Mad Mickelson. He, he was uh, the father of, uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank, the, the main girl yeah, he, he from was, Rogue yeah, One. He was Galen in Rogue One. Yes. So he would be my Doc Doom, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, because he was uh, Calasius, or however you say his name, in, yes. in Doctor Strange. And just very un underutilized. Yeah, and so, yeah, that that could be good. Yeah, he's he's a great actor. I would love to see. Yeah. That'd be he a good one. He was Hannibal for... Lecter, I think, mm -hmm. on TV. 
Yep, on, on the TV show. So, yeah, he'd be a good Doctor Strange. Yeah. Or Doctor Doom, I mean, uh, at the yep. end, too. But, yeah, definitely. That's really all. That's all I have. Really, I could cast a bunch. And I, mm-hmm. bet, I, wanted, I wanted to stop. Okay, sorry. I just <laughs> thought of something. One more. I, I know, and I'll keep it brief. Uh, I want to have Herbie in it. The stupid robot, <laughs> just in it, just in a scene because uh, Tony Stark had that hand thing that was kind of dumb, and he would always yell at that hand that would put on a suit and stuff. So Herbie would be either voiced by, uh, um, well, <laughs> would like I would throw in maybe Ben Swartz or like even Middle Ditch, or. Um, yeah, somebody like that. Like a Bill Hader. Yes, yeah, someone that Bill Hader. An- annoying. Was, they could be yeah. like annoying with it too. Yeah, that yes. that would be pretty Cause, funny. Because Hader was already um, Alpha Five in the Power Ranger uh, reboot as oh, a robot. Right. Yeah, yeah. And okay. so throwing the goofy Herbie, whatever. There you go. Okay. Yeah, did you, yeah. Is that, that could even be just like one in the post credit scene, just like yeah. as a, and then they just like, just, like the thing just like destroys it because he's like shut <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, that, that could be funny. But, uh, Johnny, what would your rating be then on Cordy Court's video? Um, let's see. I would give this, um, let's see, um, 8 out of 10. Um, better uh, better versions of a Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Oof, there you go, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would give it, I would also give it an, an 8. And then, so I would do 8 out of, 8 out of 10. Herbie is annoying, I guess. Yeah. Right. Uh, watch uh, if you ever have a time. Watch the watch the scenes from the '90s. The very bad. Roger oh, the, the 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 movie. Uh, yeah, like there was a scene where I think they're getting married at the end, or they go off in a limo, and like basically they have the sunroof, and out of the sunroof is Mister Fantastic's hand, but it's clearly just like a stick thing that's waving. <laughs> like it's a sta- It just looks bad, but I love it. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's like there's that scene in Spider Man when he, when like Mary Jane is like holding on to him, and mm-hmm. the Spider Man is just like a mannequin, and the <laughs> and her hair is going the wrong direction that that it'd be going in the wind, and everything about that scene is just like, oh my gosh, I love this so much. But okay, perfect. So that we can move on then to the new recommendations. Even though Connor is not here, he did give Court his recommendation for the week and then court's going to give us another recommendation so court why don't you give us first connor's recommendation okay so i'll try to read it or at least summarize what he wanted to leave me with here we leave us with rather um so peter jackson this guy i don't know if you heard of me i think he did something like (laughs) king kong or lord of the rings i don't know um (laughs) so it's a documentary of world war one called they should not grow old so the concept is that you go through life of an average british soldier for when they're drafted to when connor says the government says thanks see you never after you get home and the beginning is a kind of slow connor says but also because the movie is telling the rising of the political tensions of the time, but also they'll take you through what it's like to be a drafter, how little resources the actual soldiers had, like um, wearing two right blue boots, so oof, major oof on that one, sharing food, but also you get into deep stuff like he says what a mercy kill is like to do. So it looks like you got a... Um, looks very interesting. I've never yeah, heard of I, it. I, uh, yeah, I heard of this. So, yeah, it's... Um, in, in in Peter Jackson fashion, there is a it, the the documentary is about a hundred minutes, but there oh, is, is there a extended cut. <laughs> there is an extended cut that's like an extra yes. thirty minutes, but yeah, it's I've heard a lot of great things about this, and because what they did is it's using audio from BBC and the Imperial War Museum with interviews, uh, and they went and colorized and transformed with modern production techniques to add sound effects and voice acting to make it feel closer to what the actual experiences are like the poster for it shows this picture of uh, some soldiers like eating and on the left side it's all touched up in color so it's 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 clear in color and then on the right side it's it's the grainy black and white uh, footage from the uh, from the original document like the original footage so I've heard a lot of great things about this. Did he let us know if it's on any streaming platforms? It not better to be. My no- not to my knowledge. Yeah, I don't. I don't see anything. I don't where think he it explained. is. I think so. Oh, you know, it it is on HBO now, according to Decider and HBO Go, and then you can rent slash buy it on like YouTube and Prime Video and all that. And it's and since it's not a digital only release like it was on uh, like a Scoob to rent it, it's only like two or three dollars. 
I, I can help you boys out with if you're talking to so that'll Definitely. be his uh it definitely will be interesting so we will watch that and then what is your recommendation then court okay i was so back and forth with a lot of things uh i like this guy named uh the punk rock mba and i was gonna do like he uh what killed pop punk uh, i would just it's not the one i'm like because you know i'm a rambler so it's not actually the one i chose but i ch check that out if you're interested in the uh a punk rock mba channel but what i wanted to go for is because i miss uh uh going into theaters and i miss movies actually being a thing um there's this guy named call me sewer i don't know where he got the name but it's basically a decade in films of the 2010s so basically it's a matchup mashup of like the scenes it goes from like horror scenes to emotional to stuff to your action um, some comedic elements but it spans all the it's just like a big mashup of uh, a decade of so some of the best of, some of the best movies yes. and trailers from the last decade oh yes and it was so very emotional to me in different elements and gripping exciting i think it's because he uses good music i'm assuming he's the dude that uh blended this all together and mixed it but it has so many good um editing shots and or editing things he didn't shoot it i guess but touches and it'll hopefully it'll make you guys feel emotional or something like it did me but i just oh, nice. wanted to i wanted to look back when movies were a thing and yeah try to pick, yeah pick i, I went and i pulled up his channel and he, and he has a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff like this so he has one where it's a 2017 movie trailer compilation he has one where it's a los angeles ram super bowl hype up video a uh another one where it's marvel like a come together thing and so it's a bunch of adventure stuff looks like it has the beatles on it then probably the come together from the justice, justice league, league one uh there's a there's a star wars one yeah i've only seen this one so but uh if his work is in the indication of this particular video then he knows how to cut together he should probably work for uh trailers and stuff yeah sounds like oh he has uh, another one too that i'll watch this one but I'll, i think i'll be going down the rabbit hole with other videos he has one, a decade in television so it looks like the same oh. same thing but it's it's a 15 minute super cut of a bunch of shows from 2010s so probably a bunch of like the best moments of like breaking bad and game of thrones and walking dead and all that so definitely interested in this one i will watch it and then probably watch a lot more yeah so so I was going to originally go like punk rock. I like this other guy named Nate DeMate. I think I might have sent you, Luke, uh, like at least one of his videos on some band called Charmer. Mm -hmm. um, but he does a lot of good videos. But I went the total opposite route of punk rock and went into movies. So I All right, that perfect. So, pretty. yeah, we'll, we'll definitely watch this. Uh, it's a little, little shorter little, than, yeah. uh, than I was, the two-hour video. I was like, oh, I'll cut these guys a break. I'll, uh, <laughs> so all right cool so combined we'll have you know we'll start watching the long documentary for connor but awesome mm -hmm. i'll definitely be checking out both of these and i know johnny will be as well and then we'll let connor know to watch your video as well so that will wrap up now our episode 16 of rocket talk again we want to thank court for coming on for the second week in a row as thanks, connor, court. yeah thanks court i thank guess you guys know i guess now i just have to take next week off too but uh you know, <laughs> just so that just make it three in a row but yeah so thanks court for joining us well, you know he, yep. he definitely brings my, a lot of good to the table he fits right in with us so be on the lookout my services for, are always here if you need them <laughs> exactly so be on the lookout for more episodes with court in the future and uh like you said last week you can check him out on social media check out his podcast that he has as well and you can do all that what, what was you, your podcast you called again court yeah yeah it's called Re courts retro rewind review because as i've said before i love alliteration <laughs> and so I just posted um, what I call season two. It's I did eighteen Ooh. little bite-sized uh, podcast episodes. It's on um, it's on Spotify, and it's also um, yeah, it's mostly in Spotify. I get it sent over there from from Anchor, um, from Anchor Holler, sponsor um, of this podcast. There we go. <laughs> and so yeah, I just did one on Howard the Duck. Um, so check that out. I'm on the Facebooks. I'm on the Twitters. You can just probably find me at uh, on Twitter. You can find me at Jensen underscore Court, and then you can just find me on Facebook with Court Jensen if you awesome. if you so want to. 
always. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Alrighty. So yeah, that that wraps up episode sixteen. Be sure to tune in next week and the following weeks after as now things are starting to open up more games are coming out and hopefully now we'll have some things to talk about in the nerd world but be sure to like subscribe all that other fun jazz and tune in next week for more fun episodes bye bye